Well, let's just do one um, quick extra example of this linearization around a trajectory, just to give you a bit more of um, a feel for it. And this time we're going to do the linearization of, around a trajectory for the following two-dimensional system written in polar coordinates. So we've got a system which is written in polar coordinates, r and theta, so d by dt of our state um, is equal to r, and then we have 1 minus r squared here, and theta just equals so theta dot just equals 1. So this is in our standard form of x dot is equal to function of x, our state this time of our polar coordinates r and theta. Well, what does this system look like if we, say, draw its face portrait or plot some trajectories or something? Um, so if we draw things in normal Cartesian coordinates like this, so our polar coordinates are r and theta, now we can just simulate our system and build up our phase portrait in the usual way. And it turns out that um, if we start off, say, here, uh, so our initial condition corresponds to this point, um, we follow a trajectory that looks something like this, and then it spins round and round and round. And then we try some other initial conditions, and we start up here, and we go we fall into exactly the same periodic orbit, and if we start here, we also join this. And so, so this is a limit cycle, um, and it's kind of a little bit special. Um, the, li uh, the limit cycle in this case corresponds to a unit circle of radius 1. So we cut through here at 1, 1, minus 1, and minus 1. So. When we simulate our system, it looks like we have a limit cycle here. Um, so let's just try and linearize around that lim limit cycle and see what happens. So we're going to linearize around r is equal to 1. So the limit cycle um, is on the unit circle, so its radius is equal to 1. And what should we put for our um, equilibrium trajectory for theta, let's just guess t. Um, is this a sensible guess? Well, to know whether it is or not, we need to substitute into our differential equation and see if it is a solution. And in fact, we can very quickly see that, yes, it is a solution. So let's deal with the top of the first, uh, the first equation, which says that r dot is equal to r multiplied by 1 minus r squared. And r dot of our equilibrium trajectory, well, r is a constant, so we have 0 here, is equal to 1 multiplied by 1 minus 1 squared, which is equal to 0 here. So the first equation is solved by our equilibrium trajectory, and the same thing happens for the second one here. Theta dot is equal to 1. Well, if we look at the trajectory, theta is equal to t. Well, theta dot is then just equal to 1, and we have 1 is equal to 1. So this is a solution to our differential equation. So we can linearize around it using the techniques that we looked at last time. Um, so let's just do it. And when we linearize, we find that d by dt of delta x. And so this is measuring our deviations from our equilibrium trajectory. So in particular, delta x here is equal to r theta minus 1 t, so this is our equilibrium trajectory, and this is our shift to put um, our deviations around that trajectory, and this is equal to some matrix A of t multiplied by delta x. There's no input, and um, then there would be some higher order stuff, um, but let's just focus on computing a of t, and now we just apply our um, Jacobian method. So we need to find df1, dx1, df1, dx2, df2, dx1, and df2. Uh, 
to dx2. And we need to evaluate this at x is equal to x tilde ft. Um, so let's just do it. And so what do we get? Well, all we need to do is work out what the various f's and x's are in this case. So for us, our state x is equal to r theta. That's just what we said here. Um, and so x1 is equal to r, x2 is equal to theta, f1 is this equation, so this term in here, and f2 is this one here. So what do we get? So df1, dx1, so that's this function, uh, the partial derivative with respect to x1, which is r. So we get 1 minus 3r squared. Um, now we need df1, dx2. This doesn't depend on theta, though. x2 is theta, so that's 0. And similarly, this doesn't depend on either of our state variables. So when we take the partial derivatives, we get 0, 0. And then we need to evaluate it at our, um, uh, along our trajectory, theta tilde of t, um, and theta tilde is just 1 t, so along our trajectory r is equal to 1, so we end up with 1 minus 2, minus 2, 0, 0, 0. And uh, so th this thing here, this is a of t. Um, so this is our linearization around this trajectory. And um, actually, in this case, it turns out that it's not time dependent. So we can start to maybe use our um, tools for analyzing um, stability. It actually turns out this is a case that we can't do, because we see here we have an eigenvalue of 0 and of minus 2. So one of our eigenvalues is in the left half plane, but one of our eigenvalues is um, at the origin. So this is one of the cases where we don't know. Actually, we look a little bit more deeply and we see that the troublesome equation, um, so the, the equation that's giving us this zero eigenvalue, it was linear to begin with. So actually, we have a marginally stable um, uh, one of these um, eigenvalues corresponds to a marginally stable behavior. And then we're actually locally asymptotically stable with respect to deviations in R. And so in this, if you mess around with this argument a bit and try to make things a bit more rigorous, um, this is actually a way to prove that this is a limit cycle because you're able to show that for deviations in the radial direction, we'll always come back and then we're marginally stable in the theta direction. And so this just means if we give a little nudge, we just advance our limit cycle a little bit, but we stay on the same limit cycle and we have the same periodic behavior. But that's not the point here. The point here is just to illustrate linearization around trajectories one more time.